We will take the first question from Danny Segura with MMA Junkie. Hey. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, um, so be because of the pandemic, a lot of fighters lost uh, high profile fights. Uh, but in your case, it was almost uh, the reverse. You went from fighting uh, David Zawada to Neil Magny, who, who's very well known at 170. Do you think uh, things almost uh, worked out in your favor? And is, was this almost best case scenario for you? Yeah, I think it definitely is a big step up in the opponent, but it's a fight that I think I've deserved, I think that, that I've earned, and it's exactly uh, what I wanted. You know, it's a fight I've wanted for a while now, and I'm happy for the challenge. And uh, no disrespect to David, I just don't think that he earned the fight versus me yet, and uh, this is a big opportunity for me. Yeah. And, and as far as the division, there's a lot of things going on at 170. I mean, Neil Magny is a pretty big name. And, you know, prior to the Damian Maia loss, you were on a, on a nice win streak. So you could potentially be, if you beat Magny, six and one in your last seven bouts. Um, do you think that a win there could be enough to put you in the rankings? Yeah, I think it should be. I think that there's a few people in the rankings that I, I don't even know why they're in the rankings with Pettis, Connor, and Diaz. Not, none of them are beating 70 pounders right now. So I don't know why. They're in the rankings, so I think that I could easily be at like 15, and Neil's at 13 right now. So I think that a, a win over Neil, I should definitely be inside the top 15, and really making a push here. Yeah, and as far as the matchup itself, um, where do you see your strengths lie in, in this bout with Magni? Honestly, I, I feel like I'm, I'm just a more well-rounded fighter than him. I think I'm a little bit better everywhere. I think that you know, he might have the, the reach on me and, and size. and uh, But cardio-wise, I mean, in a three-round fight, it's not going to play a factor at all. So I don't see where he has any advantage. Um, so I think it's a, it's a great matchup for me. Um, but I, I'm excited for it as well. I think that Neil's a, a very tough opponent. And right, he's beaten multiple world champions, uh, beat Calvin Gaston. So, I mean, it, it's a, this is a big fight. Yeah, for sure. And the cage this time is going to be a lot smaller than the regular cage. And you mentioned there Neil Magny's sort of size and range. And, and that's something, you know, that, that's very um, well known about his style, the, his distance and the range. Um, how much do you think the smaller cage will, will affect and play a role in this fight? Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I fight at a range as well. So I'm not like an inside fighter. So I, I feel very confident fighting outside all the time. But um, I, they always say, you know, I think my grappling is a lot better than him. So a small cage usually plays a factor, uh, gives a little bit of advantage to, to the grappler. And I, I imagine I'm going to have to get inside and stay inside on him a little bit more often with my striking. So I think it plays an advantage where he can't run around and stay away as well as he used to. All right, Anthony, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. And we will take our next question from Jay Anderson with Cage Side Press. Hey, thanks very much. And, you know, you've called this fight uh, your biggest opportunity coming into it. And with that in mind, uh, have you kind of put any extra pressure on yourself to go out there and, and put on a performance, make a statement? Well, I mean, it's also my last fight of my contract. So it, everything is on the line for this fight. So it, it's uh, by every fight, I put so much pressure on myself to, to win and perform at, at the best of my ability. So I think that I wouldn't say added pressure. It's more of like just an added motivation, like where, you know, sometimes if you have any self-doubt ever, and it's easy to, to flip it with just knowing that, uh, you know, it's a lot easier just to go into the fight knowing that I've done everything right leading up to it. You know, I've been in training camp about 14, 15 weeks. I had like five, six, five, five or six different fight dates. You know, opponent changes. I, I don't know where you're fighting or how you're fighting. Don't know. So everything's kind of different for this fight. But if I'm a fighter, I'm going to get out there and fight anyone. And uh, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity. You mentioned this being the uh, last fight on your deal. Were there talks about uh, renewing prior to this? Did you choose to kind of roll the dice here and uh, go that route? Yeah, no, I haven't had any talks uh, prior to this about uh, re-signing. I, I don't know if the pandemic's playing into it a little bit or, or what exactly is happening, but this was uh, this is my opportunity to show the UFC and show the world that uh, this is the opportunity that for me to, to win this fight and, and break in the top 15 and kind of be in control of my own destiny. You know? I'm in control right now. So I went this and I'm inside the rankings. It definitely helps, you know, with uh, going to the negotiation tables and, and be able to negotiate a good quality con contract. And last one for me. I mean, you mentioned the pandemic. A lot of fighters have had to make some uh, 
adjustments, be it training at home, home gyms, that sort of thing, limited sparring partners. How have things worked out for you in this situation? It's been phenomenal with me uh, outside of being on a lift because the, you know, the, the workout room closed down, but I've been training uh, every day with uh, Douglas Lima, Will Brooks, Jacal, um, you know, was, uh, like we had another three or four guys at the ATT Atlanta and we were just, every day we would come in, we would spar, we would do everything. So nothing's changed for me. I almost could be like, it was a positive in my growth in martial arts where you have all those top, top guys, obviously with Douglas being, you know, top three welterweights in the world every day, uh, you know, four or five rounds we're training together. So I think it was uh, a great experience and, and I'm excited to be doing that on Saturday. All right. Well, thanks very much. Best of luck on Saturday. Thank you, buddy. And we'll take our next set of questions from Agni and Georgia with Max Sports Bulgaria. Hello, Anthony. Hello, how's it going? You had a very close fight with Damian Maya a year ago. What was the most important stuff that you learned from that fight? And does it open your eyes for something that you need to improve in order to become the top guy in the division? Yeah, I think obviously in that Damian fight, I, I, I was kind of a mental mess of going into that fight, leading in there with uh, a lot of outside uh, drama going on, a lot of outside negativity that was in my life at that moment. So it was kind of just cleaning all that up and uh, getting my support system uh, stronger and building these positive energy. You know, it was kind of more, I think it was, it was more of a mental thing going into that fight than a physical thing. So I think that um, going into this fight, um, obviously, I'm coming off that win in Russia, so it's more just, uh, you know, being me, being happy. We came out here a week early to Vegas to to just get get quality bonding with the team and uh, going to this fight on Saturday with uh, full board. Uh, one last from me. Uh, you are one of the guys who probably sparred a lot with uh, Kobe Covington at ATT. Uh, was it the best move for everyone in the team? Uh, that uh, he leaves ATT after the arguing with Dustin Poirier, with Masvidal and some other of the fighters. And is Kobe such a bad guy as pretty much everyone in the team describes him? Well, I'm, out, I'm in Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia now, so I haven't been down there for about nine months. You know, but when I trained there, we trained, and uh, I didn't have any drama with them. But yeah, obviously, there's a lot of drama with him and, and all the guys at the gym there. But that's kind of, you know, that's kind of more their 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 business now. Okay, thank you and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Anthony. Those are all the questions we had for you, sir. You are good to go. Uh, sounds good, man. Thank you.